New York is one of the great pedestrian cities in the world. One of my favorite parts about living here is that you don't need a car to get around. It's more than feasible to just walk. Um, <coughs> I actually can't get by because there's a uh, police car blocking the sidewalk right here. There's actually a whole block full of them. According to local law 34RCNY4-08E3, it's illegal to park on the sidewalk. Not to mention a blatant violation of the Americans with Disabilities Act. What is going on here? Why are the people who are tasked with enforcing the law breaking it in such an egregious fashion? Maybe this is just one uniquely bad precinct. I mean, they can't all be this bad. Okay, this one is too. And this one. 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 This is nothing new though. The NYPD has an extremely long and well-documented history of illegal parking and placard abuse. This despite the fact that the NYPD themselves issued a 2021 memo, or finest message as they apparently like to call them, explicitly stating that, quote, there is no valid verifiable defense for parking any vehicle operated by a member of the service on or off duty with or without a department issued parking permit under the following conditions. Double parking, fire hydrant, bus stop, sidewalk, crosswalk, bicycle lane, obstructing traffic, and no standing zone. Mayor Eric Adams, a former cop himself, pledged to clean up the NYPD when he took office. We have to redefine policing and what it means in our country and in our city. We're not going to be heavy handed. We're going to show how we could have a partnership with, between police and community. I know we can do it. We're going to get it right. That all sounds great, but there doesn't seem to be any noticeable change so far. And Adams himself has even been spotted personally driving on the sidewalk. So let's just say I'm not holding my breath. And look, I'm not just being some contrarian curmudgeon here. This illegal parking totally interferes with the main purpose of the sidewalk. It also makes it next to impossible for people with strollers or people who use wheelchairs to get around forcing them to use impassable cobblestone like this, or to go into traffic to pass by. The Americans with Disabilities Act states that a minimum unobstructed width of 48 inches is required by law on all sidewalks, which virtually every single police precinct violates in spectacular fashion. To add insult to literal injury, I witnessed lots and lots of police illegally parking in front of fire hydrants. The law requires that you park at least 15 feet away from hydrants, with violation incurring a $115 fine. But how many cops do you think have actually received that fine? I'll bet you $115 that the number is zero. And this is actually a really serious infraction that can endanger lives. The New York Fire Department has repeatedly and publicly warned against such behavior. And often when non-police do this during an emergency, the fire department will smash their windows to access the hydrant. But again, probably never happens to cop cars. Aside from being extremely annoying and dangerous, this kind of behavior fundamentally undermines law enforcement's mission. I spoke with the person behind the anonymous Twitter account Placard Corruption, which documents police parking behavior, and they said, quote, not only does the constant in-your-face violation of the law by the police erode public trust, it cultivates a culture of corruption that undermines the integrity of the police force. At a time when public trust in law enforcement is not exactly rock solid, it would seem like they would try to do everything in their power to try to improve their public image. And it seems like not parking on the sidewalk would be the lowest of the low-hanging fruit. It's also not lost on me that the majority of NYPD officers don't even live in New York City, so it's unlikely that they even view the people that live near their stations as their neighbors. And when you report the police to 311 for illegally parking, the report is forwarded directly to the people who are doing the illegal parking. Okay, to show you how big of a farce this is, let's try this out. Okay, so here is a police car that's obviously illegally parked. There could be literally no justification for why it's parked directly in the crosswalk. So let's report it to 311 and see what happens. Okay, so I just reported it. So let's wait now and see what happens. 
I meant to bring a Nature Valley granola bar, but I forgot it at home. So I hope this doesn't take too long because I'm kind of hungry. Okay, so I got a notification back from 311 that says my request is closed. Um, it says that it took them 18 minutes to close it. Um, and the response says the police department responded to the complaint and took action to fix the condition. So let's go check and see if they actually moved the van out of the crosswalk. So you can see uh, the van is definitely still parked in the crosswalk. Um, it hasn't moved an inch. I doubt that anybody even came outside to check it. Um, yeah, it's absurd. What do you think this kind of Kafka-esque farce does to the public trust? Community members are bound to start feeling helpless and stop going to the police for assistance if they ever did to begin with. In a publication titled, Building Trust Between the Police and the Citizens They Serve, the Department of Justice says, quote, because officers occupy a position of trust and confidence in their communities and are afforded awesome authority to carry out their duties, any excessive use of that authority, abuse of power, or failure to fulfill their duties can erode public trust and reduce or destroy their credibility within the communities they serve. And listen, at the end of the day, these are the people who, in theory at least, are there to enforce the law. They are law enforcement, who are given $10.8 billion of taxpayer money every year to do just that. Just imagine if every firehouse in the city was responsible for lighting fires in their neighborhood. So you might be saying, okay, so what's the solution? Well, in a perfect world, there would be effective, impartial oversight over the police. But as they've shown time and time again, the NYPD will fight tooth and nail to avoid any external accountability. So barring that, what else? Well, hmm. I mean, I guess they could just stop parking illegally. Ever since I started making this video, every time I see somebody getting a ticket for jumping the turnstile or not paying the parking meter or whatever other infraction normal people get hit with every day, it delegitimizes them in my eyes more and more. The police get to pick when and against who the law applies, which is of course bullshit. I'm sure if they stop parking illegally, it would kind of suck for them. They might have to like walk an extra block or two to get to their car. But I don't know what to tell you. Millions and millions of people slog to work every day and most of us don't get the luxury to just park our wherever we want. And of course, it is possible that they do need more parking. And if that is the case, then they should go through the proper channels to make that happen, instead of just ditching their Dodge Charger wherever it seems convenient. The essential question boils down to this. Do the police think that they're above the law they've been hired to enforce? One would hope that the answer is no, of course not. But when you look around, you see that's definitely not the reality. 